Hi everyone, it's Brittany and Katie with the Q Team in Rochester, New York, and we're back today to address something that a lot of our clients are facing in this market, which is if they've already purchased a home and they are currently homeowners, how do they navigate winning an offer if they have to sell their house? Yeah, so this has been a big topic, um, especially because a lot of people are like, you know, I have to sell, mm -hmm. I either need the money out of my house or, you know, I want to make sure that I don't have two mortgages or two houses. Right. So, you know, what do I do because this market is competitive as a buyer? Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to kind of address the two um, main approaches, big picture approaches that we can take. Um, I'll talk about number one and then Katie can kind of go on about the second option. Sure. Um, but the first one is putting yourself in a non-contingent position with a mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, so basically what we're kind of telling our clients is that in order to compete, you have to be non-contingent in this market. So how do you do so? Um, so the first way is that if you can qualify with the lender to be non-contingent without having to sell your house, basically that means that I can purchase without having to sell my house and I qualify for both of those mortgages on paper. Um, and what that really means is that you're going to be putting an offer on the house saying, I'm going to buy this house whether I sell my current house or not. Right. Um, and what we're kind of explaining is that that is a very calculated risk in this market mm -hmm. because we know that if a house is priced right and in good condition, it's going to sell and it's going to sell quickly. Right. So It'll sell. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, while you are technically saying I'm going to purchase this house without selling my house, the plan is, is that once your offer is accepted, you're going to list your house right away right. and we're going to find that buyer hopefully right away. And then you're not really going to have those two houses that you're going to be owning. And to play off of it a little bit is most of the time, the timing on your purchase and your sale can be simultaneous. Mm -hmm. So we try to keep as minimal of a gap as possible in these situations so that you don't have to make a double mortgage mm -hmm. payment. Um, but that being said, if you are selling and not being contingent when you buy, you can't count on the proceeds from your sale. Absolutely. So we got it. And we'll work with the mortgage person to kind of understand, you know, how much if they mm -hmm. didn't line up perfectly, right. you know, how much you'll need to come up with. However, if you did have to, you know, let's say dip into some of your savings that you weren't planning on because you wanted to use equity in your mm -hmm. house, as soon as your house sells and you get that equity, you can replenish that right, right. away. Yep. Um, and I was going to talk about something else. I don't remember exactly. So we'll move on yeah. to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, another option is, so you will likely have to always have your house sold before you write an offer if you're unable to qualify for two mortgages. Um, so what that looks like is we will never leave you homeless. So we encourage people, if you have a house to sell and for any reason you're not comfortable going um, non-contingent or you can't qualify for a second mortgage on top of what you already have, there's ways around that. So what that looks like is we list your house, we find your buyer, and then we negotiate on your behalf for your purchase. Um, now, if we try to do that simultaneously, we have a contingency in there subject to transfer of title, mm -hmm. which sometimes can also hinder our negotiating power. So, um, of course, we can still try to do it that way. Um, a lot of people are trying that because they, they're so afraid that they're going to be homeless. We promise we will not leave you homeless. <laughs> um, so what we can do is negotiate with your buyers for a rent back. So what that means is you close on your sale, the house, the house that you currently own, and then we say to your buyers, Mr. Buyer, Mrs. Buyer, um, we don't have a house yet or we needed to close on this in order to be competitive to purchase. So we would like to rent the house back for X number of days. And usually that's predetermined, pre-negotiated. Um, but buyers in this market are generally saying, okay, fine, mm -hmm. because they got to work with it's us. It's that or they don't get the house. Right. <laughs> so because it's so competitive, buyers are much more willing to kind of work on our terms and negotiate with us because if they're up against, you know, let's say there's 10 buyers that want your house, you know, these mm -hmm. buyers in order to set themselves apart and, you know, work on our terms, they're willing to kind of do what they have to mm -hmm. beyond just price in order to get it. So if that right. means that we, you know, if they have some time to be able to give us to be able to find that next home, that they're willing to as long as they're able to, right. which is great. Um, the other kind of things that some people have done, if they're you know still a little bit uneasy about potentially you know needing that rent back or mm -hmm. unsure about that timing, um, some people are like, hey, well I have you know my mom and dad have a room available that I'm able to kind of move in with them in the short term and stay with them while I'm you know still looking mm -hmm. to find the home, 
Or they might say, hey, I'm gonna, you know, I have a month to month rental option available and I'm gonna move in there while I'm, you know, hopefully find looking and searching and being able to find my next home. You know what's interesting is I just had somebody um, do an Airbnb because hmm, I mean, good idea. Not there's not a whole flood of people coming to Rochester for Airbnb. Right. So she was able to find somebody that had X number of weeks available, and so that's what she's doing until she closes on her new house. That's awesome. I know. <laughs> and she she didn't want to risk not being able to take advantage of this market as a seller mm -hmm. so she's like you know what i'm just gonna do it and if i have to find some place to live i'm, I'm gonna deal with that when i have to awesome. she had to mm -hmm. and she did and she found a place and she's she's gonna be fine she's not she's not homeless right exactly so <laughs> i guess that ultimately kind of what we're getting at is that there's there's tons of options mm -hmm. and a lot of people as sellers when they own a home they're like hey i want to take advantage of this i mean some people that bought their house just a couple of years ago. We just met with someone that uh, they bought it. And right now, I mean, they can sell it for, or it's on the market. They can, we can list it for almost 20 grand more than what they bought it for just a couple of years ago. Um, and that's, you know, we'll see what the market dictates in terms of what they get for that. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're walking away with all this equity and they're like, we want to take advantage of this market right. and we want that equity to be able to put towards our next move up home. Mm -hmm. So that's what a lot of people are doing is like, you know, let's take advantage of this market now as a seller and we'll figure out, we'll weigh our plan A, plan B, plan C, all those options to be able to take advantage and then put that, you know, great equity that you just earned mm -hmm. by making a great purchase a couple of years ago towards your right. next home. And I thought of the one thing we were, I was thinking of before um, related to being, um, if you go purchase something non-contingent without selling your house, is that you usually have about a month lag before your mortgage payments even start. Good point. So it gives you a little bit of time where, you know, if we didn't line them up simultaneously, as long as you have those, you know, safety net funds we talked about, mm -hmm. that you have usually about a month, sometimes a little bit longer without having to make a mortgage payment on the new house, right. that you're not going to necessarily have that double mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility there. Right. So all in all, we have several plan options for you, um, yeah. <laughs> but really there are tons of options for our, our sellers out there who want to buy um, and are nervous about being having to sell also. But there's ways to do it. There's safe ways to do it. We're not going to leave you homeless. Um, people are doing it every day. We're helping mm -hmm. people do it every day. So if you find yourself in this situation um, and you want to take advantage of the market as a seller, please reach out to us. Let's set up a meeting to discuss what the options are, what that looks like for you, what the move looks like for you, what your finances look like, and see which option or plan uh, would work best for your family. Absolutely. So don't be scared. <laughs> this is not a scary thing. You know, it's actually a great thing. It's a great time to be a seller and it's a great time to take advantage of that and be able to be a buyer and take advantage of the interest rates and right. your equity. Mm -hmm. So reach out to us, let us know, and we're here to help. That's right.